Hi, welcome to Buff Zone, sponsored by Liquor Mart, again for the second consecutive year. My name is Kyle Ringo, this is Ryan Thorburn. We cover the Colorado football program and the basketball program for that matter for the Daily Camera newspaper. We've covered basically a full month of uh, fall football practices. Uh, the season opener's just a few days away and, and we're here to share some of our thoughts on what we've seen uh, this month. Ryan, what do you make of these buffs so far? Well, first of all, welcome back. Thank you. Um, I think they had a really good camp. I think the new coaching staff is taking hold. I think it's physical. I think they're on a mission to change the culture as far as winning games on the road and just you know building a tough run first program. Um, do they have the talent to win the Pac-12? No, we're not going to the Rose Bowl this year or anything like that. But I think. What fans should look for this year is how they play, what kind of attitude do they bring, um, how hard do they play, and can they pull a few upsets you know, just by being the better team on that day, which is kind of John Embry's motto this year. Yeah, you know, the one thing I think I'll be, I'll be very surprised this year if there's a Missouri game. You know, over the past few years, we've kind of grown accustomed to uh, the Buffs losing big to teams like Missouri and some other teams. But Missouri was a, a fairly regular occurrence over the past few years. And, uh, you know, just being uh, outclassed uh, talent-wise, having, having uh, not enough speed on the field to keep up with a team like Missouri in the Big 12 Conference. And I, I just think that this team is going to be a little bit better prepared week on a week to week basis and uh, has a little bit uh, better feel for who it is and what it wants to do and I'd be shocked if this season uh, there's a Missouri game where it's you know 55 to 10 or 58 to nothing or, or whatever um, I'm not saying the buffs aren't gonna have some difficult games I mean playing Oregon playing USC are, are definitely gonna be huge challenges for them at Ohio State uh, is another game that's going to be tough, but I, I just think that from what I've seen in, in spring ball and, and through fall camp, I'd be surprised if this team gets just shellacked the way it has in some games in the recent past. I mean, let's face it, this team doesn't have any depth, um, but what I like about it is kind of the makeup where you have, you know, a senior quarterback, a senior running back, you know, you got Ryan Miller on the offensive line, senior tight end, you have key guys that are ready to have some success. And then, I, I mean, it's a big concern, obviously, to have Greg Henderson as another freshman playing. But I kind of like the infusion of young talent and, and excitability to go with these older guys. And, and, and these young guys, aren't, they don't know the culture that's been around here the last three years. They haven't been losing. So they're kind of, you know, they're here to win right away. So I kind of like that makeup. And I think they put a good starting 22 out. Now, depth is going to be an issue with a 13-game grueling schedule. Um, you know, there's a lot of teams like Hawaii that have good starting 22 and then depth, you know, isn't there to compete at a high level. But so that's their issue. I like those things and I also like the, uh, the way they've really paid attention to special teams. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think it's sort of surprising to me that uh, on a team that has so many seniors, 28 seniors on the roster, that, that so many freshmen have been able to step up and claim spots in the two deep depth chart. Uh, you know, there's a number. You mentioned Greg Henderson. They also have, uh, you know, a, a freshman punter, a freshman place kicker. Mm -hmm. You know, a freshman is the second string middle linebacker. Uh, so there's a lot of guys. I, I think health is a key issue. It, you know, it is to some extent for every team in every season. But for this particular season, if the Buffs have, you know, a, a rash of injuries like they did in the 2008 season, it, it would be a disaster for this team because then you would run into a yeah. situation where a lot of inexperienced guys would be on the field. Uh, no more so is that important than at quarterback. Uh, I think the Buffs have a, a capable backup in Nick Hirschman, but he's never played a down of college football. And if Tyler Hansen goes down as he did last year, uh, you're going to be in a situation where you're playing with a, a rookie quarterback against what has become, you know, a, a lot of people are, are saying is the toughest uh, schedule in the nation and, you know, a grueling 13-week slate of games. And so, you know, that keeping guys healthy, is, particularly at key positions like quarterback, is going to be huge for this team. 
Yeah, there's no question. If, if they were to get bowl eligible, then Tyler Hansen's in the running for first team all Pac-12. I mean, he's very crucial, obviously. And, and let's just assume, you know, we're going to talk about Hawaii later, later in the week, but let's just assume Tyler stays healthy and has the year that they expect him to have. Um, just looking at the year as a whole, kind of what do you think would be a positive? What would be uh, not acceptable? I'm thinking they need to at least flirt with bowl eligibility. I don't. I think it'll be a tough task to get there, but they need to, you know, keep the interest throughout the season and play some meaningful games down the stretch. Yeah, exactly. I, that's all you could really expect from this team at, at this particular time, given what they've been through the last five years and what they're starting out with. Um, I think this team, it, what CU fans I think will be happy with is if they see this team getting better, remaining competitive, staying engaged throughout the course of the season and you know if those November games do have something riding on them and they're and they're playing mm -hmm. you know into the fourth quarter and some of these games against you know the USC's the Ohio State's the Oregon's of the world I think no matter what the record is at the end of the year if they're competitive and they're in games like that and and giving people a reason to stay in the stands throughout yeah. all four quarters every Saturday or tuned in on their televisions, I, I think that'll be a good season and a place from which John Embry and his staff can build going forward. I think with the new staff and the move to the Pac-12, it's going to be like leading up to the Cal game last year where fans in California and all over, CU fans all over, are going to be excited. They just don't want to get boat raced 52-7, like you were saying, and I don't think that's going to happen. So. If they play the schedule in a competitive fashion um, and things look better going forward, I think that's, that's a good place to start. So what happens if that doesn't happen? I mean, what, what are the ramifications if, uh, I mean, you, you have a situation here where they've almost reached their goal of 25,000 season yeah. tickets. There's a new coaching staff, new conference. Obviously, that's played a, a lot into the excitement around this program, but what if things don't go right? What if at the end of the year we're talking about a Dan Hawkins 2006 two and ten season? Well, I think I think John Embry will get a honeymoon regardless, but I think that just makes it up a year maybe. Maybe the next year he has to do more than he would when he's replacing all these seniors and so forth. I just think you know they're going to give John Embry time, in my opinion. We they gave Dan Hawkins reluctantly got five years, and I think. You know, John Embry is, is no Dan Hawkins. I'll make that prediction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, on that note, we'll be back a, in a few days to uh, break down the Hawaii Warriors and the, the first game of the season in Honolulu on Saturday night.